So, I guess it's finally time that we talk about characters running around with mental illnesses that they don't need. I guess that's kind of a weird way of putting it, since nobody deserves or needs a mental illness. Nobody deserves to be sick, ill, or injured in any way, shape, or form. But what's really been bothering me about the whole characters with mental illnesses is that it's become such a band-aid, such a crutch, to create a special snowflake or an edgy character. I see a lot of characters out there that, for example, because this is the most common one, have got on their reference sheet or very quickly into their bio, insanity. Okay, my character does crazy things, my character does things that may harm other people, my character does things that are not completely socially acceptable, but they're insane so they don't have to take responsibility for those actions. Your character still has the ability to create coherent thoughts and to do socially acceptable things and still has the ability to fit into society and is not living a mentally insane life so you cannot claim insanity is what really bugs me the same thing with depression and anxiety they, over time when it comes to character development in a lot of cases not all these two mental illnesses have become badges of honor my character is depressed so you should feel sorry for them and your character should be supporting them my character has anxiety so they're kind of socially awkward those are not the same thing social anxiety and social awkwardness are completely different but that's another video for another time what we really want to talk about here is how characters are no longer responsible for their actions because Oh, they've got this mental illness which could cause them to do this. Here's the main point in this video. Yes, a mental illness can cause a person to act a certain way. However, someone doing a certain action does not mean that they have a certain mental illness. There it is. It's very plain and it's very obvious. You can't blame actions on mental illness. Now I want to use a couple of examples from my own character roster just to bring out my points a little bit better. First off, I want to use Joshin. He's sort of my edge character, quote unquote, I guess. I don't really know if he honestly counts, but out of all my characters, he would be the edgy one. He has a darker past and he strives to be better than it. He believes strongly in justice and he wants to help others. However, he does not like crowds and he takes a long time to warm up to people. You could conclude that he has some social anxiety, that he could possibly be depressed in some parts of his backstory, or even suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. But none of those things are in his bio, nor are they on his reference sheet. Those are things that an individual evaluating his backstory could conclude but nowhere does it actually say that these things are true or false. Good storytelling allows the reader to imagine and to create theories as to what could possibly be going on behind this character, what's happening on the inside. You don't necessarily have to have it pinned on their sleeve for everybody to see at all times. It leaves no opening for people to be able to exaggerate or null different character traits and to create their own thoughts about the character and connect to them. Now on the other hand, I have a character, Jumble Puppy. You can obviously tell without too much exaggeration by looking at the character sheet that this character is not all there. They're mute and they have short-term memory loss. There's some mental delay and some delayed development for this character mentally. On their own, they would not have survived to adulthood. However, in my story that I'm writing using my entire collection of characters, Jumbo Puppy has been in the care of Del Tora, Ridgie, and even Joshing for some time. Therefore, she's been able to be rather successful, and by adding Jumbo Puppy to any of their backstories, you'd be able to create fun and interesting scenarios where Jumbo Puppy is trying to ask questions despite her being mute, 
and the character that they're hanging out with or following around is trying to explain things to them. This creates a conflict and some interesting scenarios within the story because Jumbo Puppy is unable to look after herself. It's much more obvious that something is wrong with Jumbo, Jumbo Puppy compared to Joshin, but they're completely different character types. Jumbo Puppy is there for comic relief, more or less. However, her mental disabilities do give her, put her at a disadvantage and put whatever character she's with at a disadvantage because they're looking after her and making sure she stays safe even when they're in dangerous situations. A mental illness does not have to be glorified, stuck on a sleeve, or patched on a character as a badge of honor for it to work within your story or on your character. You can keep mental illness far below the surface of a character and still work with it in a way that develops the character as they move through their life. Whether you have a character like Joshin where you kind of have to theorize as to whether or not something is actually wrong with him, or you have a character like Jumbo Puppy where it's rather obvious that there is something there but you don't strike out, come out and say what it is, it's fairly obvious, at least to me, that you don't have to use mental illness as the crutch in order to reach your goal with your character. There are plenty of other ways to develop them with the mental illness in mind and still get to the point where you want your character to be. You always have to make sure that the mental illness that you're using portrays the character that you're trying to develop as well. Like I said earlier in this video, not all mentally insane characters that we see out there right now are actually mentally insane. In most cases, they're just impulsive and the creator did not want them to have to take responsibility for the impulses that they gave into. That's not mental insanity. However, I mean, we have a lighter version of the word insane that I think a lot of creators kind of confused with the idea of actual mental insanity. But again, that's another video for another time. I made a comment not too long ago on DeviantArt about, on a journal, about a, a certain creator removing a mental illness from their character because their character didn't actually suffer from it. But when they made the character, they believed that was the only way to get the result that they desired. The comment I made was that I wish a lot of creators would reevaluate their characters the way they did and realize the mental illness was not the gateway to whatever result in the character that they wanted. Now, I ended up getting a lot of backlash for that particular comment, because a lot of people perceived what I said as saying that all characters that had mental illness shouldn't have them. That's not what I meant at all. My point is that there are a lot of characters out there that are crutching on a mental illness that they don't need, or they have a mental illness tacked on their sleeve as a badge of honor. And, as we grow as creators, we should be able to recognize the fact that we do not need a mental illness to get a desired result, and we don't need one to make our characters special snowflakes. But those are just my thoughts on the situation, and I would love to hear yours. What do you think about the glorification of mental illness in character development and storytelling? And what do you think about characters wearing a mental illness on their sleeve? Mental illness being a crutch or an excuse for characters doing certain inappropriate actions or behaving in certain ways. Let me know in the comments below. Let's talk about it. Let's see what everybody has to say because there are so many ways to look at this particular topic and I want to hear from you. Today's featured fan art was submitted through the Discord server. We are having so much fun over there and we are growing every single day. I've got a lot of cool stuff changed up there this week. You're going to love it. So if you're not already there, check out the invite in the description below. We will be so happy to see you. Thanks for coming back another week, guys. You have no idea how much it means to me. You can check out one of the two videos on the screen right now, last week's, or, you know, some other great video, <laughs> whatever. Videos come out every single Saturday. Maybe become a Patreon if you're able and only if you're able. It really helps me out. As always, guys, have a wonderful day. And see you guys next time.